This is going to be the truth about speaking in tongues. People speak in tongues on three different occasions in the King James Bible. And things to note about these three occasions is that each time the tongue speaker spoke, he spoke in a language the audience understood. And because of this, no interpreter was needed. And each time someone spoke in tongues, there were unbelieving Jews that were present. So remember this, there was no interpreter needed, and each time there were unbelieving Jews present. But first we're going to go over the three times people spoke in tongues in scripture and see how this lines up with the modern day speaking in tongues movement. If you look at Acts chapter 2 and look at verse 4, it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Notice it says, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. And now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Notice that phrase. Every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So you can see in these verses you have unbelieving Jews that are present. And there was no need for an interpreter because verse 6 and verse 8 says, Every man heard them speak in his own language. The disciples weren't speaking a weird, strange, gibberish language that only God knows. Uh, they had the gift of tongues. The gift was being able to speak in another language without ever having learned that language. And all the audience was amazed because they say in verse 7, Are not all these which speak Galileans? So these unbelieving Jews were amazed at what was taking place. And now look at Acts chapter 10 at another occurrence of speaking in tongues. Acts chapter 10, 44 says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So once again you see no interpreter present because these people had the gift of tongues. The circumcision in the verse is referring to the Jews, so you see Jews. The cause for speaking in tongues in Acts 10 was to show these Jews that God had ordered the event. And they saw the gift of the Holy Ghost poured out on the Gentiles. And this confirmed in their minds that the Gentiles were also getting saved. So you see in this story here about speaking in tongues, it says Jews are present. And you don't see any type of gibberish language. And you don't see any interpreter because it's the gift of tongues and now the third occurrence in Acts 9 1 through 6 it says and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples he said unto them have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed and they said unto him we have not so much heard so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which 
should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So once again, you see Jews present, no interpreter, no sign of a gibberish language. And these disciples only knew the baptism of John, which was to manifest Jesus Christ to Israel. And Paul gives them the gospel about Jesus Christ, and they get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And to confirm that Paul's message is from God, he lays hands on them and they speak with tongues. And this confirms with them that Paul is no fake and that this is really from God. And now that we have gone over the three times people spake in tongues in scripture, next we will see that the reason for speaking in tongues was for a sign to unbelieving Jews to confirm something with the Jews. And 1 Corinthians 14.22 says, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that which believe. So tongues are for a sign. Who does the Bible say requires a sign? If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, For the Jews require a sign and the greeks seek after wisdom so first corinthians 14 22 says tongues are for a sign and then first corinthians 1 22 says the jews require a sign and now let's look at the first time the word sign is mentioned in the bible in exodus chapter 4 and verse 6 it says and the lord said furthermore unto him talking to moses Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. So Moses puts his hand into his bosom. And when he pulls it out, it's leprous. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And then look at verse 8. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. So Moses is the first healer in the Bible, and God causes him to heal himself. Looking at verse 8 in chapter 4 of Exodus, it says, If they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter son. And why is God giving Moses these miracles to perform? It says in Exodus 4.1, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. So God is giving him the power to perform these signs and miracles to confirm his legitimacy to the unbelieving Jews. And this is exactly what the sign gifts are for in the book of Acts. Faith healing, speaking in tongues, casting out devils, drinking deadly poison, and so on and so forth are all sign gifts that the apostles had to confirm the word with unbelieving Jews. And this proves that the modern day charismatic movement and tongues movement is a fake. If you look at Mark 16, 17, 17 through 20, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serp serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Notice verse 20 and Mark 16 says confirming the word with signs following. You can see that speaking in tongues wasn't used to edify the disciples. It wasn't used to show off or brag about having the gift. 
it was used to confirm the word that was being preached. And once again in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. And now that we have got the introduction out of the way, let's look at the modern day tongue speaking movement and see if it lines up with scripture at all. Uh, first we see that the modern day tongue speaker relies on experience over explanation. You can explain with the scriptures the speaking in tongues, but they disregard the scriptures. So they take their experience that they had over an explanation of scripture. I can show all of these verses and show the truth about speaking in tongues and the scriptures to these people, but they will still say they know what they felt. And they know it is from God because they had some experience. And they are going to rely on that experience over any explanation you can give them from the Bible. The reason it is dangerous to rely on experience is because the devil can give you an experience. The Antichrist will have signs in the time of Jacob's trouble that will deceive many people. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The magicians in Exodus, Janhees and Jambres were performing miracles by the power of Satan. So Satan can counterfeit the gifts of God. The modern day tongue speaking movement is only a counterfeit of the real thing which the disciples had. They think that their experience came from God and that is because Satan, the god of this world, transforms himself into an angel of light. And if you're a tongue speaker, then you have been deceived by your experience. I'm not doubting you spoke in tongues. I'm just doubting that it came from the Holy Spirit. You are either faking it or it is coming from unclean spirits. In the Bible, unclean spirits are given permission to deceive. Those who reject truth and those that are disobedient to the truth. Look up the phrase lying spirit in your Bible and see how God gives permission to these spirits to go into the mouth of false prophets. All of these tongues speaking preachers have a lying spirit. They don't give you Bible for what they are teaching. They get people on stage, put on a little show and give you an experience. And that is why they need hype, hyped up music. And they have the rhythm in their voices when they preach. The extra emotion in their voice. They need to show you uh, fake healing to get you emotional and hyped up. They are all about experience and never give any explanation for what they are doing from the scriptures. Other than maybe taking stuff out of context. If your tongue speaking is coming straight from the Holy Spirit, then why does Romans 8.26 say this? It says, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not that we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. It says, they can't be uttered. So how is tongue speaking coming straight from the Holy Spirit as they claim. And Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 14:14 14, 14, that when he prays in an unknown tongue, his spirit prayeth. He did it say the Holy Spirit. But next we see that tongue speakers not only rely on experience over explanation, but they would rather boast than to build up and Proverbs 25:14 says, Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. They don't care about edifying others. All they want to do is edify their self and show you their false gift. 
They want you to see how great they are because they are so charismatic and gifted. They go as far as saying that you don't have the Holy Ghost if you don't speak in tongues. I've had several people tell me that I don't have the Holy Ghost. They say you may be saved, but you just don't have the Holy Spirit. And they are using the false gift of speaking in tongues as proof of the Holy Spirit and as proof they are more spiritual than you are. They would rather boast about themselves than build up another Christian. And looking at the Bible, we see that we get the Holy Ghost the moment we believe and that it doesn't come from speaking in a gibberish language. Romans 8 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So the verse shows that if a man doesn't have the Spirit, then he isn't saved, because now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if you're none of his, then you're not saved. Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So does it say after you spoke in tongues you were sealed or after you believed? It says, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And Paul plainly lets us know that every saved man doesn't speak in tongues. Because it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 30 through 31, it says, Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So he even says, Not every saved man speaks in tongues. And so did the verse say, After you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, or after you spoke in tongues in Ephesians 1 13. If you're honest, then you will say after that you believed. These people like to sit at the front of the church and speak in tongues so everyone can see them, and they want you to see what a spiritual giant they are when they're up there with their gibberish language. And someone with such a haughty spirit makes God sick. God hates a proud look. So he hates the modern day tongues movement, which is all about making yourself look good. And it's all about, it's more about the Holy Ghost than it is the Son. The Holy Ghost in the Bible is said to draw more attention to the Son. That's how the Bible teaches the Holy Ghost, what the Holy Ghost does. It doesn't draw attention to himself. But the charismatic movement puts way more emphasis on the Holy Ghost. These guys boast of a false gift. They claim to have the gift of tongues as the apostles had, and the book of Revelation refers to them as liars for doing so. If you look at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. So the Corinthians, like the modern day tongue speakers, were doing the same thing by showing off their false gift. And that is why Paul said it would be better if they did other things. In 1 Corinthians 14, 5 and 6 it said, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, except I shall speak to you either by revelation, or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine? If speaking in tongues is so great and wonderful, then why is Paul wanting them to do something besides speaking in tongues? It's because they aren't edifying anyone but their self. And one of the last day signs is that men shall be lovers of their own self. And all these guys, or mostly women, are going around just or edifying themselves. And next we see that their gibberish is the result of judgment. 
Their gibberish is the result of a judgment. Did you know that when you reject the truth, God will continue to give you less truth? Did you know that when a man messes with the Bible, God messes with his mind, and men can be destroyed for lack of knowledge? The less you know about the Bible, the easier it is for the devil to deceive you. The reason God used tongues for a sign was because he was showing the Jews a coming judgment. At the Tower of Babel, men were getting together and doing things without God. As a judgment, God confounded their language. In Genesis 11:7, it says, Go to, let us go down there, go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. By God using the gift of tongues, He was showing the Jews that if they rejected their Messiah, Jesus Christ, then they would be scattered among Gentile nations, around people of a language they wouldn't understand. And that is exactly what happened. If you turn to it, Deuteronomy 28, verses 48 and 49, it says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. And people today in the tongue-speaking movement are speaking gibberish and making an outright fool of their self because of judgment. They rejected the truth. They want their experience over a real explanation they want to boast rather than to build up and as a judgment God continues to let them have these false experiences gives their pastors and teachers a lying spirit uh, gives them new Bible versions to let them not have any more knowledge of the Bible and this leads them further and further away from the truth they honestly believe I believe they honestly believe speaking in tongues is some kind of new language between them and God, a language that no one else knows that is foreign from the Bible. And Paul plainly lets us know it isn't gibberish. He lets us know it is languages that can be learned. In 1 Corinthians 14, 23, it says, If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? If ye have a congregation full of people, and several people are up speaking in Spanish, French, and whatever language, and someone who doesn't speak Spanish or French comes in, will they not say that ye are mad? Wouldn't they call it a madhouse? If speaking in tongues really was gibberish, which it isn't, and someone walked in and seen all these people mumbling gibberish, then they are going to think it is a madhouse. So speaking in tongues isn't gibberish, as you see. And the men in 1 Corinthians 14 didn't have the gift of tongues. They were people of different languages that could speak Diff uh, many different languages that were in the church of Corinth and he is warning them that they shouldn't get up and speak in other tongues because it doesn't edify anyone but their self. It's not that they had the gift of tongues. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 and 2 says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. The reason he speaketh not unto men but unto God and no man understandeth him is because a man is speaking a different language that is unknown to everyone in the audience. God would be the only person that knew the language. The language isn't gibberish. It is only unknown because the people don't know the man's native tongue. If I went to a Spanish-speaking congregation and got up speaking in English, then I would be speaking in an unknown tongue. 
I wouldn't be speaking in a gibberish language because it is an actual language. But the only person that would know what I was saying was me and God, because God knows all languages. 1 Corinthians 14, 3 and 4 says, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Notice how negatively Paul is speaking against tongues. He is saying they don't edify. Now let's just pretend for a minute that speaking in tongues is some new language or gibberish language that isn't an actual language known to man, these tongue speakers would still be unscriptural. In 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 5 it says, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive edifying. Do you see a bunch of interpreters letting you know what all of these people are saying? How can you interpret 30 or 40 people chanting in this gibberish language? See how God is letting them make a fool of their self and their gibberish has led to judgment? They've got lying spirits from the mouth of their pastors. And 1 Corinthians 14, 10 through 11 says, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, how shall I shall be unto him that speaketh a, bar a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. If a Spanish man comes and wants to speak in front of an English-speaking crowd, and he doesn't have an interpreter, to the crowd, he is going to be a barbarian. It would edify no one but the Spanish man. And only him and God would know what he's saying. 1 Corinthians 14, 13 through 16 says, Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say Amen at the giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? If I go to a charismatic church today and see everyone speaking in tongues, how is that going to help and edify me? You say because you can see the power of God. But that just goes back to the experience. Uh, I can experience seeing people do crazy things and claim that that's from God. But I have a more sure word of prophecy. And that's the Bible. I have the Bible. And the Bible shows me that what they are doing is a fraud. The Bible is always more sure and more reliable than any experience. And Peter says this in his book. He lets us know, even though he walked and talked with Jesus, seen all the miracles of Jesus, was with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, he still says he has a more sure word of prophecy, referring to the scriptures. And 1 Corinthians 14, 18 through 19 says, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Paul could speak many different languages, but he would rather speak in the language people could understand so that he would edify others. It sounds like Paul is pretty down on speaking in tongues. Look at the guidelines that Paul gives for, for speaking in tongues. In 1 Corinthians 14, 27 and 28, it says, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. For example, if a Spanish man assembles with the church, and he is only speaking Spanish, 
he shouldn't get up and speak in an unknown tongue because his native language be, would be unknown to the people there. While it isn't unknown to him because that is his native language, it would be unknown to all the English-speaking people. He would be edifying no one but himself, so he should keep silence in the church. He can speak to himself and God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 29 and 33 says, Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. God is not the author of confusion, so the Holy Spirit isn't behind the tongue-speaking movement of today. A lot of times the Holy Spirit gets blamed for a lot of stuff that he has nothing to do with. And 1 Corinthians 14.34 says, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And the context is speaking in tongues. Women aren't even supposed to speak in tongues, as the verse says. And the majority of people who speak in tongues today, it seems like it's mostly women. So they're, they're very unscriptural. In 1 Corinthians 14, 38, it says, But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. If you're going to continue speaking in tongues and taking your experience of a Bible explanation of tongues, then you have the right to remain ignorant. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 39 and 40 says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and for forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. Fifty people running around dancing and speaking gibberish isn't decent or in order. So we can see from 1 Corinthians 14 that tongues are actual languages that can be learned and no one in the Bible was ever speaking in a gibberish language. Tongues were never to edify oneself and were never a sign of salvation. The Bible doesn't say that speaking in tongues is evidence of the Holy Ghost. And once again, if we pretend that speaking in tongues is a gibberish, unknown language, all the guidelines are still broken by modern day tongue speakers. One, if you went to a charismatic church today, they don't have three people at the most speaking in tongues. They have many more doing it and all at the same time. Two, they don't have it one at a time. Three, they don't use an interpreter. Four, women are speaking in tongues and it says, Women are forbidden to speak in tongues in the churches. Which is the point of tongues. Excuse me. What is the point of tongues. When in most churches everyone speaks English. Now if an English speaking man. Is preaching to a Spanish congregation. Then he needs an interpreter. Because he is preaching to them in an unknown tongue. He doesn't have the gift of tongues as the apostles had. Because he needs an interpreter. The apostles could speak in a language that they didn't even know so that they could firm the word with a sign. I believe that the gifts that the apostles had seized when the Jews rejected the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and God quit dealing with the Jews and started dealing with the Gentiles. As we said before, the Jews require a sign. So... He wasn't doing the sign gifts no more because it's the Jews that require a sign. And the tongue speaking isn't going to come back, the gift of tongues, until the time of Jacob's trouble when God goes back to dealing with the Jews. And them sign gifts are going to come back. And the Antichrist is going to counterfeit those signs and miracles. And if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, or chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And where it says, when that which is perfect is come, 
is talking about Jesus coming back at the second advent. And at this time, there's going to be no more speaking in tongues. But as for now, in this period that we're in, there is no gift of tongues. It comes back in the time of Jacob's trouble, but then it's done away when that which is perfect is come, which is Jesus Christ. And when you say, well, why does it say when that which is perfect is come? That doesn't sound like it's talking about a person. Well, what about the verse in Philippians that says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. This says, but when that which is perfect is come. So, I believe tongues have seized until the time of Jacob's trouble. Then they come back because God starts dealing with the Jews. And then they're done away when Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent. But even if that isn't true, the way that these people and the speaking in tongues movement today are speaking in tongues is very unscriptural. So don't let them make you feel like you don't have the Holy Ghost or that you're not saved because you're not up acting like a crazy person speaking in a gibberish language. So as we can see from this study, the modern day charismatic movement is unbiblical. We should realize we have more, a more sure word of prophecy. The things in the King James Bible are better than any experience we can ever have. And we shouldn't just base our uh, beliefs off of experiences. And we shouldn't boast ourselves of a false gift. We should edify others. And if we continue to rely on the words of God and not try to change it, or change it to suit our experience or our belief, then God won't mess our mind up and give us a lack of knowledge. And He will continue to show us more truth through the King James Bible.